the Joint Special School Building Committee. I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this body is authorized to meet electronically. So I'd like to call the meeting of the Joint Special School Building Committee to order. It's seven o'clock, October 22nd, 2022. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1929. 2056099. The meeting ID is 839-8042-5862. And the password is 196292. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at the City Hall and Hunt Memorial Library. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 99, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during the meeting shall be done by roll call vote. We will start tonight's meeting by having the clerk call a roll, please, by in accordance with state law, please tell us that uh, if you're alone and that you can hear and see us. Okay, uh, Alderman Dowd. Present, then I can, I'm alone and practicing social distancing and can hear everyone. Alderman uh, Harry Cathright. I am present. I am in the room with my husband, but I have earphones on and we're muted. Alderman Cleet. I am here. I'm alone. I can hear everybody and I'm practicing social distancing. Alderman Lou. I'm here alone and I can hear you. Alderman uh, Wilshire. I'm here. I am alone and I can hear everyone. Ms. Bishop. I'm here, I'm practicing social distancing. Children are in the next room, but they don't care what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, Ms. Brown. I'm in the room alone, practicing social distancing. Ms. Giglio. Hi, I'm here, I'm alone in the room, and I'm practicing social distancing. Uh, Mr. Garino. Mr. Greeno will be 20 minutes or so. Lady uh, informed me just a little while ago. And Ms. Raymond. Uh, I'm here. I'm alone in the room. Um, but, oh, good. They moved. I was going to say that my candy bowl is behind me, but someone took it. So <laughs> none of the children should be wandering in like they did all last night. So thank you. Sugar high at 9 o'clock. Well, they're going to stay up and watch the debate. So, yay. Yeah, you'll, yeah. And Chairman, <laughs> we do have a quorum. Thank you. So if there are no objections, I will waive the reading of the meeting of September 24th, 2020, accept the minutes and place them on file. Uh, remarks by the chairman uh, that we have a, a few things on the agenda tonight and hopefully we can get through them in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, the, the project is moving along quite well and, and a lot is being done. And a lot of planning is being done and we'll be addressing a lot of that tonight. Invoices on the school are on the school district website um, and they are printed on the agenda. So if you click on that link, it should bring you to where you need to see the invoices. Uh, remarks by school administration, Mr. Smith? Nothing at this time. Okay, you'll be talking later, I know. I else for discussion? Okay, so. Uh, this evening, we'll start off with the architect's report, uh, Harriman, uh, Jamie. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Jamie Willett with Harriman. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the report, and hopefully we have no issues with that. Let's see. 
you can share your screen. Mm -hmm. And please go full presentation. How's that? There you go. Excellent. So we have some, like, like, like Alderman Dowd said, we have a lot of things going on and very active. So I'm hoping to present some of those, those good findings today. Um, <clears throat> agenda for tonight's architect's report is the uh, construction administration update over at Fairgrounds Middle School, um, design milestones and updates at Penichuk Middle School, as well as the new middle school, and then the project schedule. <clears throat> So at Fairgrounds Middle School, um, as I've presented a little bit in the past, in the past few uh, months uh, visits, uh, we have reviewed quite a few submittals, um, which again is the products and, and uh, items being used for the actual construction of the project. At this time, we've received over a hundred submittals uh, that have been not only received, but also reviewed um, and processed back to Harvey. Um, we received over RFIs, which uh, as, as I mentioned before, a request for information to help make sure that the projects being built and understood based on the drawings that we have. So we have over 40 of those received and responded to. And there's been a few um, <clears throat> recent proposals that uh, have come back from uh, processing between uh, Harriman and Harvey and as, as well as the school district. And a couple of those uh, I'd like to show a little bit more in a second, but the first one is um, some site work that is uh, looking to move forward this fall. Um, some of those are um, items to address in the front of the building. So the project, <clears throat> the project bought quite a bit of work to the front of the school and, and kind of paving around the building. Um, but as the project started up, um, it was identified some areas that needed some little additional work that, that was able to be, or is potentially able to be encomp encompassed into the project budget. Um, so we looked at that and I'll, I'll show, I'll describe that work in just a moment in my, in my next slide. PCO number nine was for a new clock system in the building. The existing clocks in the building are analog. Um, so they're, you, you set them in each room um, and, you're, and you're not, you know, they're not wired together. Um, there was a, um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, a push to, to try to get um, a new clock system in that building. And uh, that would be all wirelessly, I think it's wireless that, that we went with um, so that they're all interconnected and run in the same schedule. Um, and so Harvey was able to review that with the low voltage allowance that they had in the budget. And, and that one is able to move ahead um, without increasing any cost of the budget, budget at this time. And then PCO number 10 is for additional site work. So there's, there's two items there for site work. One's for work that would happen this fall and then the other is for work that would happen in the spring. Some of the stuff in the fall um, is to coincide with paving that's ongoing right now for which is already part of the project. So let's look at what that, what that means. <clears throat> so I kind of broke out that, that last slide of the overall building into a few different areas. So here's the front of the school. Um, this is the bus loop as part of the project here. We know that where the bus loop is, we could identify where we are. Front of the building would be just off this particular slide here, the new parking area. Some of that work um, you can see outlined in like a dashed green um, and green infill is a crushed stone and weed block. Um, there was originally these little islands that were separating the parking areas um, were designed to have uh, bark mulch in there. Um, and, and, and during during discussions, it was it would become it becomes a maintenance item where we you have to you know mulch those all the time. And then if you have plantings in there, they, they don't you know weeds grow up through them. And it was identified by, by facilities and others that it made sense to still provide plantings in there, low maintenance plantings, but provide crushed stone in those islands so that you're not, um, you're not having to, to mulch those every single season and, and um, you know, continue to take the weeds out of there. So it would be a long-term um, nice, nice look in there without having to, to uh, impact uh, maintenance budgets. <clears throat> In the bus loop, uh, we were paving some of that bus loop, um, but there was some remaining stuff um, that wasn't being repaved. And to improve the overall appearance of the front of the building and have nice uh, pavement, that that was being that's going to be incorporated into the into the project as well. So that the whole bus loop would be freshly paved, um, as well as parking area over here, um, which which was not originally identified for. 
Um, and then, and, and this is actually both proposals that I was referring to the spring and summer. Some of these are going into one and, and the other. So uh, this is the overall work for both of those. Um, new curbing around the uh, bus island here, because some of that uh, curbing is, is beat up a little bit. Um, and so we, we were buying some up in this area up here, but it looked, it made sense to provide all new paving and all curbs while we were paving this area. There's new irrigation being looked at inside these blue circles here and here um, to try to keep that fresh, fresh in the front um, year round when, when, well, not year round, I guess in the, in the growing months um, with, with uh, irrigation. Rebuilding of some retaining wall on the front here, as well as again, some of that pea stone uh, crushed gravel. In the back of the building, um, we, we ended up finding out that there is a need to have a tractor trailer truck come in and deliver to the back of the building. So we had to reconfigure some of our parking back here and add some additional paving spots um, to, or, or re relocate some of the paving and, and planting so that um, you could get a tractor trailer truck in, backed in, and then back around out of the out of the location. And so this is the back of the building. And then over on this particular slide, the part portion of the slide is where the portables um, are being located. It was you could see that there is a blue dash line around some of that. It was decided that the back of the house did not need irrigation at this time. Um, so that was that was actually been retracted from the, this particular sketch, although it is shown in this one that's that would not be part of this these proposals. Um, and then a new sidewalk connection uh, over to an existing trail that happens across here in the back, and then some riprap stone down the edges of the fire loop, uh, as opposed to you know uh, grass and and whatnot. It would be some riprap so that you're not dealing with. Um, plows tearing up the grass along the side or, or even the salt that gets gets uh, laid across the uh, pavement. Yeah, Jamie, if I could just interject that yeah. uh, these changes were all reviewed by Sean. Sean and I walked this with the principal, the vice principal and, and Harvey and a representative from Harriman. And these changes were all a uh, mutually agreed to. In the front of the school, we were looking to make sure that this looked like the project was uh, made the school look like it had just been updated and pristine rather than having half of it done, half not done. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, in the back, we found that there's an 18 wheeler that delivers food to the uh, 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 kitchen area and they had to have the area to get that truck in here and out. Um, <clears throat> and the two grass areas in the back uh, once the portables are gone, we're going to seed that area, but uh, it won't be any irrigation, um, save some money on the project. And the Rick Rack was replacing where they were going to hydro seed, but that would have never grown. So we're trying to make smart moves on, 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 a, on the school and make it look really nice as well as be very economical. Yeah, Jamie. Over on Penachuk Middle School, the design updates um, that's happening there. Uh, we did recently uh, attend a planning board meeting um, for I think that was a few weeks ago now. Um, that didn't uh, that didn't go as as we had hoped. Um, there were some concerns on the uh, particular intersection that is being proposed there, um, and so we have uh, we have been tabled for the next. Uh, it's it's now pushed out to the the second. Um, planning board meeting happening. Um, so November 5th, we're gonna be going back to the planning board with additional information um, and additional um, items that they had, had talked about during the last planning board meeting. Uh, it doesn't, at this time, it doesn't impact schedule in the building, on, on the project at all or anything like that. We, we had gone, gotten in early enough to, um, you know, review this with them. And if, and if there was a hiccup like this where we, we didn't expect that there was, you know, concern on the intersection, um, we, we've made it so that we're able to get back in and, and review these with all the information they need. So November 5th, we're hoping to get back in there um, and are looking, based on a lot of meetings we actually had since that meeting, um, are looking to, to move ahead with, with a, a nice meeting and, and, and hopefully approval from the planning board at that time. Um, we also had meetings with the principal and vice principal over there. Um, again, another follow-up meeting from previous ones. Um, and that went really well. I will be sharing some of that um, data that we found from that meeting or, or discussed in that meeting in, in a moment. 
And then upcoming pr uh, project milestones. Again, I had mentioned the planning board meeting, like a second review that's on November 5th. And then we have our construction document submission happening out in December, uh, mid December 2020. <clears throat> So the principal and vice principal meeting, um, the meeting participants were the principal and vice principal, the nurse, the band director, the assistant superintendent Parker, um, Nashua School uh, District Plant Operations, and Harriman. Uh, the first item we talked about was the nurse area. And then we talked about the band music area, administration area, and then special ed classroom placement. So at the nurse area, we reviewed this was this was a layout um, that we initially had submitted um, through design development as an alternate, um, and and this that she really um, she really liked the plan. There was just a really one concern she had was that they have two um, nurse desks that they need. They have two nurses on staff um, at different times of the of the day, and and. I guess in addition with, with COVID things going on, there's just a need for some additional space as well as making the ADA compliance of this nurses area, which is the initial push on this whole, this whole uh, item. Um, and during that discussion, we discovered that the in-house suspension was, was more than adequate for what they anticipated um, or, or do anticipate coming, coming up um, with the increased population. So what we decided was it'd be a really good idea to move um, this toilet that actually services the in-house suspension into the actual in-house suspension space, space over here. So it would still serve the in-house suspension, um, but the nurses area would allow to you know, grow a little bit and give a little extra space. So we're working on the actual layout of that, um, but you know, things that she liked was, you know, she loved having a storage closet that really was a necessity for her. She has a lot of stuff that has to be stored and, and should not be out in uh, easily accessible areas. Um, the toilet room with a, with a handicapped shower or transfer shower and then a washer and dryer were a necessity. Um, and then just having a ha handicapped stall. Uh, right now it's more of a closet toilet and it's not, it's not ideal. So, so this was a real big, big plus for her. Um, having additional cot space, which she doesn't, she only has a space or two right now. And so having a third space uh, made a lot of sense, as well as having an exam space for her that's, you know, in a private space that can be kept out from other people entering into. And then we talked about with the band um, director over there and again, the principal and vice principal. Um, and there was different topics that we talked about here. And one was the band, band uh, director did not feel that his space was adequate in size. And so originally what he, we were proposing is to actually, you know, increase the building space, uh, square footage for the band room. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately with the building type that this is, uh, Increasing the square footage directly and opening up to it is 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 not code compliant. And and the and the way we can add these additions is by actually putting a two-hour firewall um, against where we're putting the new addition, so that that two-hour firewall actually acts as a separation of building. So technically speaking, um, this is a different building than this building, even though they're interconnected with with the and whatnot. So this, this door would be a 90 minute door and there's a two hour wall that keeps it separated. So just opening up a big space off from that band space is a, does not meet the intent of the code. Um, and so what we had discussed was, you know, we've actually increased the keyboarding music space or actually given them one because what they have now is a um, occupational or OTPT space and keyboard music space in the same exact room. Um, Walking in there initially, I was quite surprised at seeing that. Oh, I was having my head one accidentally. Um, and and so we we conveyed that this is well, we've given this we've make taken the music room that was here or chorus room, and pulled it into this whole new space. So they have a nice size space, but that that was still kind of inadequate for what we needed in band. So what we discovered was that he has lots of equipment stored in that space, and part of the space um, concerns was that. You know, he has to be have all these students in here plus all his band equipment. So what we're reviewing, we're reviewing this with the STEM and robotics team at the same time, and the principal's doing that right now. Is that perhaps we could get a storage space over here for his equipment? Um, this STEM and robotics space is is kind of clunky right now at the time. So we're reviewing uh, opportunities to redefine this space 
as well as give Vanda storage. Um, and then that kind of would satisfy both of the concerns that, that are happening right now over in those in that area. So that's still in discussion with the teachers right now, but that's what we're, we've come up to with at the last meeting. And then over in the administration space, um, talk to them about you know, their functioning of their space right now, because most of this work is complete. Um, and they were quite happy with how that, that looks. There was a couple of concerns that we had, we had talked about and what, it, what, it, what they found out was that we're just not done everything in this space because we're, some of it goes into the later project. As an example, the PA system is located right here right now. Um, and, and it kind of, you know, it's hard for them to get, use a space uh, with their, their seats over here and then over here. Although that, as a temporary purpose, it wasn't a problem, but he, the teacher, I mean, the principal and the vice principal was thinking it was going to be here the whole time. And so uh, that's just temporary until we do the whole project where the PA system gets updated. Um, and so that, that understanding um, worked out after we discussed that. Um, but one of the concerns they did have is, is with that nurse configuration that happened over here, we looked at a few minutes ago, there was a workroom here where the in-house suspension is um, becoming going to be located. And so the workroom that was there has to be relocated into this space that actually currently is underutilized. Um, and so we, we move this over here. Um, there's a new record space right here. Their concern was that they had nowhere in the corridor to seat students um, who, who might be a disturbance to other classes or having um, some, some issues. And so they were looking for a space to have seats where they both could oversee or, or if their one was you know, do, assisting something different, um, at least one of them could see it at all times. So we're gonna carve out a space here, um, which really doesn't impact the workroom at all um, and give some seating locations here as well as seats over here. And the, and the reason they would needed two different areas was because uh, if there was a conflict between two students, they don't wanna sit them next to each other. So they need kind of visual um, observation in two different locations. And so this seemed to be the best approach where the main office would be able to oversee here. And then one of these individuals or both would be able to oversee this location. And then the, the kind of the last discussion we had was um, about special ed classroom placement. Currently in Penichuk, there is just one wing that's dedicated to the special ed. Um, and that was the approach that was given to us uh, from the get-go and continuing forward. But based on more recent conversations, they had a real uh, desire to start incorporating some of the special ed uh, classrooms into different areas of the school. Uh, and that's done very easily. So it was an easy discussion that, that you know, there's not really any difference between um, a special ed classroom and a, and a sixth grade classroom, so to speak. There are specialized rooms like OTPT and, and whatnot. Um, those rooms won't be able to be relocated, but just moving a name from special ed classroom to another location um, is an easy, easy thing to fulfill. Um, <clears throat> some of that is, you know, you may have fluctuations in different grades anyway. So you would be, you know, throughout different years might have to be moving some classroom spaces around as, as the years go on. So it, it was an easy uh, adjustment for that. And we are, oh yeah, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I put this slide in. So we're working on the team commons development um, and trying to uh, envision a little further what that looks like. Um, and so that's kind of this area and this area with the collaboration rooms here. And so here's a little image of what we were starting to develop it into. So this isn't, this isn't fully defined. This is a you know conceptual look at it, but um, you know having some transparency into those collaboration rooms. So those are those rooms that were in the center, the team commons areas right here, bringing some natural light into that space, and then there would be um, opportunities for projection uh, screens here for, for students to work on in both this location and this location, or both this wall and this wall, um, so they can have group group work together, uh, whether it's teachers or staff or teacher and staff. I mean teachers and students or, or, or just students or just uh, staff. So uh, there's good, good areas there for collaboration to happen and, and development projects. All right, at the new middle school, um, since our last meeting at the JSSBC, we had a principal and vice principals meeting. Um, it was brought to our attention. There's actually a new principal over there that, that we hadn't met with. Uh, so that meeting was, uh, very good to have. We, we got to update them on the project and actually discover some of the um, concerns they had. And we'll look at those in a moment. And then I think we've talked a few times about meeting with kitchen, the kitchen director. Um, and we did have a follow-up meeting based on the latest design. And we'll, we'll look at that in just a moment. 
And then upcoming milestones, our de design development submission is actually next week. Uh, so we're, we're putting in lots of hours and lots of staff to, to get that up to speed. And, and it's, it's looking real, real good. We're very excited about it. And then we're looking at a planning board submission preliminarily in November. Um, it, it may actually slide just a little bit into December, but we're, we're reviewing that right now with, with all the stuff going on. Well, I guess that's a submission. The planning board meeting would be in December, January. So that, that's still, that's still um, pending. So the, I start off with a kitchen follow-up meeting. Um, we did a virtual meeting and included the Nashua School District Director, the Assistant Superintendent, Harriman, and Harriman's Kitchen Consultant. Um, we reviewed the lay, latest layout updated from our last meeting. So we had a meeting, we come up with a design, um, made a, and then during that meeting, we had a few suggestions. Um, and so we made those suggestions. We emailed them back to the kitchen director. Uh, she actually was able to take that to her staff um, and then welcomed comments back. Um, and so they gave that feedback and she brought the feedback to this meeting that we had. Um, and it was, it was quite minimal. It was, it was a, a, few, a few small tweaks and changing some two burner stoves to four burner stoves, uh, very easy to accommodate. Since that meeting, we've, we've put together an equipment cut book um, for her to review, we've sent it off. Um, and so basically now she can just make sure that we're picking the right equipment that's desired in the area. Um, and then also uh, pick any options in the equipment that are in that cut that she may find useful for that, for those pieces of equipment. So here's that layout, um, you know, refined a little bit here from, from what we, uh, actually this is the latest that she had come up with because you can see this four burner stoves right here where the cursor is on both sides. Um, and so that was really the only change as she came. She, they're very excited. Um, I, I think just for uh, everyone's kind of familiarization with, with how this operates is deliveries would come in, they would bring in, they'd fill in the cooler, fill in the freezer and fill in the dry storage as needed. When food prep's getting ready, they pull out what they need. There's hot workstations and then prep areas um, throughout, you know, here, hot and hot here, working with the stoves and, and, and uh, cooking devices and then cold prep. And then they serve that up to the serving lines. And there's three different lines. There's a, there's a pizza line and a hot food line. So there's hot food over here and then a cold serving line. Um, and so they serve from those three different locations and then students would come in, they'd eat, they'd bring back their trays or, or whatever, whatever it's decided to be used at the school. Um, would go through dishwashing and then you'd kind of start over in the course of pot washing for the cooking devices. Very efficient design. Uh, and well laid out for the three serving lines that was desired at this location. And a little, little, you know, I like, to, I like to think it's a treat because you get to see some 3D aspects. To me, that I get excited about it. But you kind of see what that looks like in a 3D element. So there's your kitchen office, your cooler and freezer, dry storage. Your, your, you can see your dishwasher over here. These are the three serving lines. And then of course you have your, you know, your there's your four range oven. You have your combi ovens and steamers, uh, all work tables. So that's kind of a neat little view here. All right, and then we had our principal and vice principal meeting. Um, again, that went well. We had a virtual meeting, which included the Nashua Elm Street Middle School principal and vice principal. The assistant superintendent was there, uh, Nashua School District Plant Ops and Harriman. Um, we reviewed the project scope and plan. So again, they weren't familiar with um, our previous discussions. So we brought them up to speed with, with what this project um, entails. We actually spent a lot of time reviewing the teaming layouts of grades, uh, which was very beneficial because we haven't really gotten into a full, we, we had initial discussions on it, but not really based on the, the most recent updates and plans. It was, it was good to do that. And actually what we identified, there was a couple adjustments that were needed to accommodate the teaming. And I'll, and I'll actually share those at a moment. Um, and then we also discussed um, that we'd have a teacher's meeting like we've done um, on fairgrounds previously. Um, and that will happen on Penachuk as well, but uh, to bring everybody up to speed and, and kind of get additional comments and, and review items that, uh, that might come up. So one of those, those items that was discovered is that we only actually had two science labs per grade. Um, and so, so in New Hampshire, you can, in the New Hampshire uh, standards, you know, science, there is a difference between science lab and a science classroom. Um, but it was discovered that there actually needed to be three labs and not necessarily uh, two labs in a class science classroom. 
Um, and some of that's for flexibility in the future, but some of that is just the current, current grades, what they're teaching in those teaming efforts. So this is actually a, a, a image of the latest where we actually got one in and you can see we have is still some refinements to do, but there's sinks in here for the, the lab stations. These tables are movable so that you can, you know, maybe if you, you have a different science station going in the middle at, for one teaching lesson, but you can roll, bring them over to a, a lab station. Uh, flexibility was has seemed to be a continuous importance for the science teachers that we meet with or have met with in all fairground, Penichuk. Um, and actually we haven't, I don't think we've had specific meetings with the Elm Street science teachers, but um, that, that has been the common theme in science is that some flexibility because stationary science um, only works for certain lessons and having some flexibility really works nicely. And you can see a science prep area. Um, and actually this little room here is a teacher's work room, but we will move on and look at the plan. So over on teaming, um, you can see here, we, we actually went and put some bullets in here to kind of illustrate how the teaming is, is panning out working. So there's three teams per grade. You have the sixth grade teams, um, like in blue, here's one team, in the green, here's another team, and in the purple, there's another team. There's some special ed classrooms in, intermixed in those areas. Um, this particular floor, the first level has an OTPT space, and then project achievement, which is over at Elm Street now, and emotional handicap program, some of those programs that are pulling in from the other schools. <clears throat> On the second level, again, you have that same uh, grouping of seventh grade classrooms this time. Again, some special ed. In this particular wing, we have ELL, DEF program, and then the Bridges program, which is which is over at uh, Elm Street currently. And then the third level has the eighth grade classrooms, where you have the uh, again the three group, the three teaming uh, areas, um, and a special ed programs included in there. Um, as well as a self-contained program and world language classrooms. Uh, other refinements that we're, we're working on, you could start seeing, this is the admin space, the secure vestibule comes in, they interact with the, uh, the secure vestibule window. Um, if they are um, admitted in, they can come through these doors that are buzzed open. They can come into the admin space if they need to or continue wherever they've been directed for or desired to go based on uh, you know, uh, meeting with the admin person. Um, if they come into admin, you can start to see that we've populated some of those spaces to reflect what the furniture layouts uh, might become. Um, you know, you have plenty of room in conference room, plenty of room in records, um, and then there's plenty of room in these offices to have you know, one on one meetings. Uh, have a student in there uh, and have discussions with them if, if needed, depending on which, which office is which. Toilet restrooms and of course a teacher's lounge and a mother's room um, in, in that corner there. <laughs> so here's that again, there's my, like I call it a little treat here. I like to, like to see this, it excites me, but uh, maybe not everyone, but a little bit of 3D element here and, and uh, you can kind of see how those spaces look um, coming from afar. <laughs> And then again, working over in the, the locker rooms and STEM robotics space, started putting some casework in there. Um, and then the locker rooms have lockers and benches and showers and stalls. Uh, so again, little little 3D snippet there. there plenty of like STEM, the STEM robotics needs plenty of storage. So we put plenty of up, uh, tall cabinetry, some lower cabinets, a sink unit and lots of counter space to work on. All right, and schedule. Um, here we are right in this big red line in the third week in October. You can see we're in the fairgrounds or you know, right in the right in the heart of construction here. Um, and I think Harvey will be showing that in a moment. Uh, and Penichuk, we're, we're about half to two thirds of the way through construction documents phase. Um, and at the new middle school, we're just wrapping up design development. And that's it. Are there any questions uh, on Harriman, uh, Alderman Klee? Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Dowd. I, I have a couple of questions, actually, for each one, um, if, if you if you don't mind. Um, on the the um, fairgrounds, 
when you were talking about the tractor trailer, are they going to be losing any um, parking spaces that they currently have? So is there going to be a net loss of any parking or no? No, no, no. I think there was a, there was an increase uh, from what they have. Um, and that was part of our goal initially. Um, I think we moved a couple because of the tractor trailer truck uh, adjustment. Uh, and I think we may have lost a, a couple, but it didn't, it's not a net loss. It's still a net gain. Still a gain. Okay. That's perfect. Um, and then the, um, when you talked about where the, um, the trailers are, are going to be, um, and, and this is just throwing it out. And um, I think it's more for um, Chairman Dowd and, and the school. Could those like maybe in the future be used for something like community gardens or um, you were talking about them being like green space. I was just wondering if that might not be. So um, when, once the portables are moved and they are rented, mm -hmm. so their yeah. motion is they're not there longer in the year, uh, that will be green space. And once we turn the project back over to the school department, the School department and the Board of Ed can do whatever they want to do. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, on the, the Penichuk, um, I, I first off, I, I assume that we're going to discuss what was what happened at the planning board with the, the parking later. I mean, the later. intersection later on. Okay. Later. I, and then I'm not going to. Yeah. The, the question I had is on the band room. Um, when you were talking about their, the store, you know, the amount of space, you said that. He said that uh, it originally wasn't wasn't the space wasn't adequate. What was the um, what do they have now versus what the new plan is going to give them? Did they lose or gain any? Or no, there's no there's no well there was no change in the space currently designed. Um, the proposal is to add some storage space so that um, we can store the equipment out of the way so that there's more classroom area for the students. Okay. You you had you had just mentioned something about when you were talking about that the second building I want to refer to where the chorus is going to be and so on. Um, that's additional space from what they have now. No. Yeah. Oh yes, yes that is. And and so that room that used to be chorus was um, was is now the keyboarding space, and that keyboarding space was crammed in with the with the uh, PT space. So now it's giving adequate space for all those different classrooms. And so the chorus room expansion actually is a whole new classroom and the old chorus room is now keyboarding space. It gives them additional storage space as well because now there's a little extra room uh, for all three of those locations. Great. Um, and I just have one last question, if you don't mind. When you were talking about the new middle school and you're talking about the kitchen area and so on, and we saw where the, the dry space was, and the freezer and, and, and refrigerator and so on. Um, and this may be just too soon to ask because I know we're still in the design phase, but what about um, storage for things like pan, pots and pans and trays and any of those things, whether it's paper products or whether it's actual, um, is that also, because I didn't seem to see that. I saw where the pot, where the cleaning area was, but not. Yeah, what you didn't see in some of those, even the 3D view is there's, there's uh, you know, hangers on the walls, hangers on um, all the, um, stainless steel center islands that hang the pots and pans and devices. Um, and then there is storage, actually building storage out behind what we saw in that imagery um, for the entire building, which is actually quite quite large storage. Space. So if, if they did have things like additional um, shipments of large you know, things of like paper plates or something, as an example, there is locations out back. Um, and then there was also a, a closet, which was actually right as you walked into that entry door from the outside off to the right, there was a storage room there um, that has some closet space as well. well thank you very much, uh, Chairman Dad. That, that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else with a question? All right. I have a question. It's Harry Gathright, I have oh. a question. Alderman Gathright. <laughs> when you talked about the, um, the two labs per grade, but then you said you only needed three labs. So are you just saying you need three labs period or three labs per grade? Per grade, yeah, that's three okay. labs. Yeah, on each floor, there would be three science labs um, in, in one each one of those teaming groups on each grade. Thank you. All set, anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to um, the construction manager's report. I don't know if Carl, did you wanna kick it off or just give it to Ken? 
You're on mute. No, I'll let Kenny take it. Ken? Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Um, so I'll just uh, try to share my screen here. How's that? Go full screen. There you go. Good. All right. Okay. So um, I'll just, I'll start with, um, I'll do a quick overview of the major milestones for both projects, and then we'll get into the items that everybody wants to see the pretty pictures of uh, construction or not so pretty pictures. Um, so I'll start with Penichuk. Uh, this is just a quick update on the scope that was performed this summer and the fall. Um, this is all the work that was ahead of the, uh, the renovation project that's going to start in the spring. Um, so right now, all of the interior work in the main entry vestibule is complete. Uh, we did up also upgrade the dry sprinkler system. That work is also complete. Uh, the bullet, we were, we were waiting for the new transaction window uh, in the, in the uh, new vestibule that was installed this week. Uh, so the only item that we are waiting for uh, to arrive on site is a new cabinet unit heater. And we're expecting that to land on site within the next couple of weeks. So we will uh, work with the administration and staff in there and get that installed, hopefully um, before the colder months come in. But that is uh, only in the vestibule, so it shouldn't affect anybody in the school. Um, at the exterior of the site, um, I'm, I'm sure people noticed that we, we were doing some site work and utilities. This was in preparation for the work that we we're going to be doing in the spring. So. Um, as Jamie was reviewing in the um, in the design review, a lot of the new additions are going to be um, in the inside the footprint of of where the existing utilities water line were going to land. So we had to reroute those. So we were able to get ahead of the game and do that work this summer. So that will help us in the spring to get get going earlier. Uh, next, uh, some project milestones for fairgrounds. Um, as uh, Alderman Dowd and Jamie noted, uh, we're making very uh, good progress there. Um, the exterior site work will be uh, substantially complete in November, and the portable classrooms um, were uh, the completed final walkthrough took place this week. Where there's just a few items to button up there. I'll go into more detail in the next uh, few slides. Um, at the interior of the school, um, we're working all, as, as you'll see on the next few slides, we're working all over the building. Um, we're, we're working with, uh, in tandem with um, Sharon Coffey, the principal and her staff, and they've been great. And um, it's been very helpful. We're, we're doing a lot of important work right now. So we're just coordinating the turnover of the interior spaces with conjunction with um, everything that's going on with COVID-19 and we're trying to uh, just make sure that everybody is communicating and we'll, we'll get things turned over um, as soon as people can get into the school. Uh, so the next group of slides will just give a quick breakdown of the scope being performed um, and then I'll just share the progress photos as I mentioned. So um, Jamie did a, so we'll get into the site work and the exterior improvements. I'm not sure if, um, if you folks have been to the site at all, but you'll notice a lot of changes have been taking place. Jamie did a great job uh, explaining some of the design changes and the improvements that were added to the project um, as a result of a site walkthrough that uh, Alderman Dowd and uh, the group performed. Um, as, as they noted, it was important to, to make the front of the school look like a, a brand new project that, that it, and a good design that it deserves. Um, so. You'll notice now we do have the, the security and safety fencing installed at the perimeter. This is just um, to easily delineate the construction access versus the public for safety. Um, so when when the when the kids and the faculty do return to school, we'll make sure that there is adequate signage and that is very clear for parents, uh, students, teachers, uh, where they can go, where they can't go. Um, as Jamie noted, a lot of the um, the new design changes was really important to get the final paving scheduled. And um, that is being performed uh, early November. Uh, the new sidewalks are, are in, as, as Jamie noted as well. And the concrete at the new parent drop-off and the uh, sidewalks is being placed tomorrow. I was out there today and it's, uh, it's looking uh, very good. Uh, the new parking areas and the fire lane is complete. And uh, the remaining of the exterior improvements um, 
the benches, the, the, the landscaping and the fencing, this will all be completed in the spring when we're uh, done more of the, the heavy construction. We don't wanna, we don't wanna ruin anything that we put down. So we wanna make sure everything is uh, nice and neat when we, when we pull out and turn over the school. So I, I did, this is a, an overview of the phasing plan. So if you remember last month, it was kind of confusing. There was a lot of colors and I was, it, it, was, it was a little confusing to me. So I, I basically just updated this, this plan to reflect the areas where we're currently working. So you can get a sense of, we really are working all over the building right now. Um, again, uh, the, the staff has been amazing to work with. And I guess one of the silver linings of this pandemic is that it's allowed us to capture some areas earlier. Um, I don't know if you can see, uh, can you see my cursor at all on the screen? Yes, yeah, I can okay. see it. So this area in the middle, this uh, we weren't supposed to uh, capture this until uh, 2021. So uh, this this area, the, um, the we call it the octagon. This is the ELL, the STEAM, the math and the reading intervention areas. So there's a lot of heavy abatement and demolition that needs to needs to be performed in this area and these two science classrooms. We've been able to coordinate with the staff and get in there earlier. So this is going to be um, this is going to help us uh, a lot to get to get everything completed in there. Um, I guess so. I'll just kind of run through the areas. So uh, we're currently working working in the um, as I noted earlier, the portable classrooms. Those are substantially complete. Uh, we're working in the student commons areas in each the sixth, uh, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade areas and the adjacent corridors. Um, I'll show some updated progress photos for the new addition. Uh, we'll be, we're making great progress there. And um, we're also working in the, uh, the art rooms, the music room, and the CTE woodshop areas as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of work going on and um, we'll get into the photos right now. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll start to uh, review the progress. So here's, um, here's just a, some examples of the site work photos. These photos were taken last week, um, so they're almost outdated at this point. It's it, it, it's progressing very quickly. So I'll start up in the um, in the left hand corner. This is a view of the rear of the school where the paving has been completed. Um, this is at prop. This is around the corner uh, near the CTE workshop. This is one of the areas where um, Alderman Dowd noted the tractor trailer access. Uh, this is this is an area that was changed to allow for those those tight corners. Uh, the, this photo right here, this is a, a view of the uh, one of the new retaining walls at the at the fire lane. And then the uh, this photo right here, this is again this the updated fire lane. Uh, this this area where this worker is standing right here, this will be where the riprap will be located. This was originally scheduled to be hydro seated, but um, as Alderman Dowd noted, uh, it's, it's not really going to see a lot of sun and it'll be tough to grow grass back there. It'd be a little easier to maintain with the riprap as is. Easier maintenance, less cost. Hey, go back one slide, Ken. Sure. That uh, hydro seed on top of that wall uh, shouldn't have been hydro seeded. That's going to be pea stone uh, because you can imagine trying to get a mower up there. So, and, and from a maintenance standpoint, it's going to have the impervious black material with a pea stone on top of it, and it'll last forever, we hope. Good. Okay. Uh, here's a view of the uh, portable classrooms. Um, you can see that uh, we've got quite a little uh, area set up back there. These are, uh, these are substantially complete. We've performed the walkthrough with the fire department and the building department. There was a few minor things that needed to be adjusted, um, but we've taken care of those. Um, we are we are exploring uh, some overhead coverage for ramps in the landings. This will um, help the facilities department uh, make, get rid of snow, and it will also make it, a, make it safer for travel for students and faculty. Uh, we also are adding uh, fiber and communications to one of the portables. I believe they're going to be used as a uh, computer lab. So um, that's, that's just something that uh, we're handling internally. Just so... One other thing, Ken, those those Jersey barriers are there for a reason and will stay there so that nothing can ever hit the portables. And then we have bollards installed in every corner so uh, if somebody's plowing, they can't hit the building. Thank you. 
And again, uh, as as Alderman Dowd mentioned earlier, the um, at the completion of the project, the portals are removed, the area is uh, returned to its original state, rehydroceded, and then uh, turned over to the school at, at the end of the project. Uh, so here's here's a um, I guess the, the design plan view of the new administration area and front entry. So this is a complete architectural and MEP renovation of the admin area main office. It's, it, this is the, the focal point of the of the new school and, and the new entry. Uh, there is a new canopy at the entrance. Uh, the underside of the canopy is, uh, I, I believe it's uh, red cedar. Uh, I, I saw the product data submittal come through today and it, it looks beautiful. Uh, it's going to be a great design. Uh, this will be turned over uh, February 19th. So this will be we're shooting for the beginning of February vacation. This will give uh, faculty and the uh, custodial staff time to get everything moved in and ready uh, for when students return after February vacation. Um, so right now the work going on in there is uh, the, the demolition and the ab abatement has been completed. And we're working, uh, as you'll see in the next photos, we're working on the, um, the concrete footings are complete and we'll be working on the masonry walls and establishing the new, the new walls that are uh, gonna increase the building footprint. The um, mechanical, electrical, fire protection, uh, all that work is ongoing and um, in preparation for the slab placement at the interior. So here's, a, here's an idea of what the front of the building is, is going to look like. I stole this from Jamie's drawings. So it's, um, I'm not sure if you're, if you're able to kind of see what the concept is, but um, this, is, this is what it will look like. I'll have to, have Jamie work up some renderings for me next month. Uh, but you can see um, in the photo up to the right, the, the new, the front of the, um, the old roof has been demolished and this will allow us to, to build onto the existing school and increase the building footprint for the new uh, principal's office and vice principal's office. You can see the uh, foundations and the subgrade has been placed and the, um, the rebar is protruding from the concrete foundations and will be the mason will be starting work um, over the next week or two. So again, these aren't these aren't pretty pictures, but uh, next month you'll you'll definitely be able to see the building take shape, and um, I think everybody will will uh, like what you see. This is a panoramic view of the the front of the building. You can kind of get a sense of of where the new offices are going to be. And off to the left here, so the new offices are right here. Off to the left will be um, a new landscaping garden, and the canopy will, will overhang there. So it'll be a nice new entrance to the school. Uh, so again, this is the art room and the bathrooms, the CTE workshop. This is up in the, I want to say maybe the upper right-hand corner, if you're looking at in plan view. Um, We've uh, a lot of these areas again are, are in are in progress. We've just completed a lot of the heavy demo. I'd say the CTE classroom um, over here. This this really we we do have some cabinetry in there. We've prime painted. We've got some doors installed and ready to go. Um, so again, these these spaces are going to be uh, taking shape over the next month, and the, uh, this area will be turned over November thirteenth. This is the student commons areas. A lot of the, so each, as everyone, ever, as everybody knows, each uh, sixth, seventh and eighth grade wing has a student common, a new student commons area. Um, a lot of these areas are typically at the same stage. They're ready for paint and miscellaneous finishes. Um, as you can see um, in the upper right hand corner, ready for paint, um, prime paint, we got the flooring installed. Um, we have the, the new collaboration offices and workrooms. This is a this is taken in the seventh grade wing. So again, a lot of these areas are are at the same stage. And next month, you'll see fresh paint and a more finished space uh, cleaned up. So um, this is an example of one of the science rooms that I that I mentioned earlier, where I said that we were able to get in there earlier. Unfortunately, there are no photos because we're not allowed to go in there while the abatement is taking place. So next month, I'll have some more updated photos for those spaces. 
Any questions on the construction update or uh, any of any of the spaces or phasing? Anyone? Heather Raymond? Oh, good. I was about to shout out. Um, so this is just um, purely aesthetics, but I'm curious about, I saw in that last picture, the painted ductwork, which is really cool looking. Um, it, will that continue to be visible? And um, what is the ceiling going to be? I just, I don't want another black, and I dark. Can, I, and I can address this one if you'd like. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the, we won't be painting it black or dark colors. This, there'll be white ceiling up above and we are painting the ductwork and painting the walls. So if you're attached to the pink or turquoise, now would be the time to shout that out, but that, those are yeah. gonna be changed. Well, personally, I don't have any objection to white or pink or turquoise. I just, I find the black um, in another building very oppressive, especially yeah. when there's no windows. Understood. Um, no, um, long story behind that. Yeah, I, I know. I don't even want to get into it. I just don't want to repeat it. <laughs> uh, this is this is gonna be a very fresh space and very you know I say fresh and bright feeling space with the colors are gonna be lightened up some, especially with the ductwork will match the ceiling. I believe is what we're matching. So it'll be a white ceiling and, and it'll 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 uh, it'll feel very fresh. All right, and um, it will all be exposed. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, right, that's all. I mean. Excellent presentation. I love the pictures. Thank you so much. It'll, uh, as I mentioned, it'll it'll be a lot prettier uh, to come. It's not much to look at right now, but this is the important work that unfortunately has to be done. Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Um, Ken, if you're going to ask Jamie to do a picture of the front of that, make sure he gives it to you in 3D. <laughs> he, he likes that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's that's one of my one of my favorite. I just. <laughs> I just gave Jamie a project on the record now. Great. Nice. So, so one thing, uh, the fairground school right now is uh, a hard hat area. Um, and because of COVID, we can't have a large group go through. But if anybody would like to take a tour, um, we can set up small, very small groups. And you'll have to have hard hats and masks when you go into school. But if anybody's really interested to walk through the the dust and everything at the moment, uh, or we can wait till a little later, but um, just let me know by email. We'll take it up right now. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Uh, so you wanna talk the change orders, Ken? Yeah, sure, I guess um, I think next on the agenda was the Penachuk. Um, DD alternates, but maybe uh, while we're on fairgrounds, I can I can talk about PCCO number two, and we can be done with fairgrounds. Yeah. Explain what the acronyms are for the people that may not know what PCCO stands for. I have to remind myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this way. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> if I, so sorry, if I could just let you know, um, Dan Weeks, I believe somewhere on the agenda, I do apologize for joining late. Um, and would be very happy to talk about the solar piece as soon as you're ready. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we got you. Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Yep. Go ahead, Ken. Okay, thank you. Uh, so again, just to remind the group, uh, we call these PCCOs. This is just a formality, um, just to finalize previously approved uh, change orders that were uh, re uh, reviewed and approved by in tandem with the design team and plan operations and Alderman Dowd. So, um, again, these are all items that have been looked at and approved by the group. Um, so I know uh, Jamie no uh, noted earlier the integrated clock system at fairgrounds. Uh, this uh, we were able to uh, utilize an allowance that was included in the approved guaranteed maximum price uh, contract. So we were able to avoid adding additional costs to the project and get this included in the design of the school. So now we'll have a completely integrated clock system. Every room will have the same time and it'll be synced for bell schedule, uh, et cetera. So that is not included in this uh, change order. Um, so I guess we'll start with the, the first item that, that is on this change order that was approved by the group was the uh, performance of the duct cleaning. 
in fairgrounds. Um, I, I don't think that this had been uh, performed since the school was uh, completed originally. So this was definitely an important time to do it, especially um, as we are in there performing construction right now. So that was the first item that was included in this change order. That was an ad of uh, $43,888.98. The second item on this change order was actually a credit. Um, that we, credits are basically money we're giving back to the project. And this was a, a deletion of a metal closure strip at the lockers. This was a detail that was worked out with Harriman um, in the field. And we were able to uh, eliminate this detail, which took away some scope and labor that needed to be performed. And that was a credit uh, of $405.00. The next item was uh, there was um, some added tile wainscoting in a toilet room. There was a toilet room that um, was not that did not have new tile included in in the design. Um, so we did we were able to utilize some of uh, some allowance cost to reduce this price, uh, but there was an um, an added cost of uh, for the tile material it's, itself for two thousand dollars five hundred eighty two cents that's five hundred eighty two dollars and ninety two cents. And the the last item included in this change order. Uh, some of the site layout revisions, uh, Jamie went through those in detail. Again, um, this this was uh, very important to get uh, approved and completed, and I thank the group for uh, doing so uh, with haste. Uh, we uh, Getting the paving crew to adhere to the schedule uh, was very important, so um, thank you again for, for the group for reviewing that and getting it approved. Uh, and that is for the added value of $36,000 613.89 cents. So the total value of this change order is $82,680.79. Okay, so these things have been previously approved. This is sort of a little housekeeping. Uh, we need the entire joint special to, to vote on these changes uh, formally. So if I could have a motion to approve PCCO number two. So moved. Alderman Gothright made the motion for approval. Any discussion? Trust me, if you saw the ductwork, you know it has to be clean. But anyway, um, so would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Greeno has joined us, and I hope he noted in the record what time he showed up. <laughs> um, I think I was here at seven, seven, about 7.20. Okay, uh, I may not do this in order, but um, uh, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Lindy, Linda Harriet Gathright? Yes. Uh, Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Okay. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Um, Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Uh, Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. And Mr. Garino votes yes. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Motion carries 10 to 0. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ken, you want to do nine? Let Ken go. Right here. Yeah. So, so, so nine uh, was the centralized clock system. So this is uh, this does not need to be approved because uh, I was able to utilize the um, allowance. Okay, so good. We don't need to vote on that, but I will tell you when we first went into that school, I think Jamie was there. And Carl, the first time we took a visit to that school, that's the first thing they wanted to change because it's an antique. We ought to sell it on eBay. Anyway, okay. Uh, do you want to talk to the estimates for the Penichuk Middle School? Or do you want me to start it off? And I think uh, I think I'll let Carl take that one if you don't mind. Okay. The football's over in your court. All right, thanks, uh, Ken. 
you're talking about the 3DD alternates that are up for discussion, um, as Jamie alluded to earlier in his presentation, uh, alternate number one was the nurses area. Um, what I do find missing here though, Ken, is the, is the numbers. You got those presidents? Can I, do I have to dig them up? I have them, Carl. You got them, Kath? I do. Currently right now during the DD estimate, we put together pricing based on the design that we saw. So alternate number one for the nurses area is how much, Kath? $299,584. Thank you. Alternate number three, uh, one of the discussion points uh, that was picked up after uh, the DD uh, design was, was moving forward was what are we doing with all of the existing mechanical equipment that is nearing the end of its useful life? Uh, I can say back in the elementary school renovations, this was the primary focus of the schools was to give uh, the schools new mechanical equipment that would stand the test of time for the next 30 plus years. Uh, the focus on the middle schools was more of uh, an equalization of, of uh, program and, and students. And I think this got overlooked. So there is a discussion about potentially replacing the rooftop units down the line. Um, once we get into the new school, should the monies be available, we can look and revisit this because this is a very costly uh, change. And it goes together with alternate number four, if you're gonna replace the rooftop units, they are on a very old control system. It's called a pneumatic system. It's an air tube system. It's outdated. You can't even get parts anymore. We'd put it on a new DDC system like every other school that we've touched and the new high schools all have these electronic uh, control systems where uh, facilities can bring up any school, any piece of equipment, make an adjustment that they need to do without even having to visit the school. So to start with alternate number three, the replacement of, of the rooftop units is it's over a million dollars, 1.5, if I recall correctly. The uh, alternate number three to replace the RTUs was 580,597. When you add the, the controls was another, alternate number four to replace the controls was 575,863. Right. So as a combined total, you're talking about an expense of over a million dollars. The discussion points that we've had was, let's wait and see where we are on the projects as we move forward. Let's not lose sight on what we've got done already and where we're going. Um, as we finish these schools, much like fairgrounds, whatever is left over, that money will, will get turned back uh, to you folks. Uh, and we'll have a better handle on where we are on Penichuk at that point in time. So that the, the focus would be that we could incorporate these changes long before we're looking to exit and finish up the new middle school. But as at this point in time, my recommendation was you will get the pricing for you. You'll know what you're dealing with. And we're going to hold it aside to see if the funds are available uh, as we get into the brand new middle school finishing up um, Penichuk. So if I could just interject, we we do feel that, that we'll be able to afford this at the end with, with our contingencies. However, mm -hmm. we didn't want to expend the contingencies now before we get into the new middle school. Um, and we can put... Uh, this three and four off. The one that I believe that we should vote to accomplish uh, as part of the design right now is, is the nurse's room. Uh, with all that's going on, including COVID and all that, uh, I think the nurse's spaces need to be addressed. Uh, and I think, Jamie, you talked about the, the nurse's station. So I, I, yes. I think we want to approve that. So... Uh, Unless you you okay with that, Carl? Yeah. So yeah, the million dollar uh, price tag on on the RTUs at this point in time, I would suggest we wait just to see where we are financially. Uh, the two hundred ninety nine, you know, again, um, the drawings are, are just about wrapped up, so this one would be nice to get incorporated into the documents which are coming out just before Christmas for actual sending out to subcontractors and vendors for final bids. So it'd be nice to get that incorporated if we could. So when Sean and I heard the price on three and four, we took a pause, skipped a heartbeat. Um, we want to do that, but we want to wait and make sure that we have the money in the project to do it. So we can wait because it's on top of the school for the most part. 
Uh, but I would like a motion to approve the alternate number one to the nurses area in the amount of $299,584. I'll so move. I'll make that motion. All right, motion made by Alderman Wilshire. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Oh, well, hey, I'm. <laughs> yeah, <they're... laughs> well, I, you know, we can, I can skip it. I just want to say, I agree. I think this is absolutely critical. I hope everybody votes for it, um, especially right now. Um, we're learning every day um, what kind of spaces we really need. So, yeah. And we know we can cover this easily in the contingency for Pendicheck, so that's not an issue. So, if, are there any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Linda Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Thank you. Okay, so anything else for Harvey? The moment, no. Okay, so with us we have tonight uh, um, Mr. Dan Weeks, who is the person that, uh, I'll let him introduce himself and explain himself, but he wants to talk about the solar project on top of the new middle school. Uh, Dan, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, thank you so much, Alderman Dowd, and good evening everyone from over on Shattuck Street. Um, really appreciate this opportunity to present um, the proposal that we've been developing with um, Alderman Dowd, with um, Dan Donovan, Sean Smith, and the team for the new middle school. Now, obviously, we're a ways away from having a roof on which to install solar panels, um, so I'll give a quick explanation for, for why this is coming before you tonight uh, at the recommendation of the, the city hall, um, the, the staff at the school department. Um, let me just see if I can share my screen here. Um, I know um, many of you, perhaps all of you, have already um, seen uh, a presentation when we were fortunate, uh, Revision Energy, which I represent, to um, be selected for um, both city projects, uh, three city projects, and then um, two school projects, which are currently being installed. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, great. Um, by way of just quick background, um, as I, I think most or all of you know, we are currently completing installations on the first two of Nashua 17 schools, which were deemed uh, over a year ago, frankly, a couple years ago, we began these discussions with Sean and Dan um, and others. Uh, the first two that were deemed solar ready in terms of having new roofs uh, that were ideal for solar. Uh, those were Fairgrounds Middle School. I was just by there yesterday, uh, looking good. <laughs> Still a lot of activity happening out on the grounds and, and the renovations are continuing, but the solar panels are all on the roof. Uh, I can share some photos later if you'd like. Um, and then Dr. Crisp, which we're also wrapping up. We did the shutdown uh, last Friday to do the final interconnection. And so it's the final testing, commissioning approvals, and those systems will be turned on in the next um, handful of weeks. So we're um, very excited and very honored to get to work with the uh, school district on these first two projects. Um, we were asked going back uh, several months or, or the better part of a year to look at the new middle school project, which I know this committee is charged with working on, um, as well as Penichuk, which of course is scheduled for renovations next year. And so um, I won't give you the, the full background, but certainly happy to provide that if helpful, um, simply to say that Revision Energy began this process of working with the city um, two years ago. The city went through a competitive RFP process, um, had a number of different firms bid on a portfolio of city projects. Um, Revision was very honored to um, through extensive interview process to be selected by the city um, and their outside consultant for those city projects. Um, and then was asked to bring um, similar proposals forward for those first two schools and here tonight for the new middle school. And I'll briefly touch on um, Penichuk if that's of interest as well. Um, so the design that we are presenting here um, is for a 512 kilowatt solar array. Um, that's around 1400 panels, a pretty good size system, just a little bit smaller than the fairground system that's um, being completed right now. Um, this system would generate just over 600,000 kilowatt hours of electricity, um, which we don't have at this stage load projections for the future consumption 
at the school, but we expect that this will be 100% or even a little above 100% in terms of energy offset based on similar facilities that we have designed for you and for others. Um, the uh, plans obviously are still, still in the final stages of, of development. So as you can see, this, this plan that we're uh, building off of is not the most detailed, um, but we've tried to design a conservative array using the higher elevation roof sections omitting some of the lower roof sections where there will be more shading impacts, um, but leaving plenty of room for potential adjustments for expansion if, if you choose, um, but um, being conservative about what we are very confident we can fit in terms of solar capacity. Uh, and I'll say a word about why it's important to have a, um, a fairly robust design at this stage in terms of financing and tax credits, which are expiring at the end of this year. Um, so that's the quick overview plan um, just a couple of, of stats. This is the monthly production figures. As you'd expect, production peaks in the summer months with the longer days, more sunlight hours. Uh, we model much lower winter production, particularly January, February, December, when we're assuming quite a bit of snowfall in the upper right. That's the soiling factor um, coverage by, by snow. And instead of having the, the teams actually, the facilities team remove snow, we simply build that into the model and assume lower production that way. The panel's at about 2.5 pounds per square foot. When we were last before uh, city council, that number was actually seven pounds, but just before actually finalizing the design of the two current systems, um, we were able to shift our, our racking technology to a much lighter weight system. Um, so we know that it will not add um, in terms of the structural capacity of the building um, and, and save some potential expenses you finalize the design. Um, again, the, the projects, these look quite similar to the ones that are, that are being completed right now for Fairgrounds and, 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 um, and Dr. Crisp um, and would be happy to provide a, a tour if, if any of this committee, uh, your members, other school board members are interested in, in seeing the completed systems. Um, but again, no penetrations to the roof deck, the roof man manufacturer's warranties remain in full effect. Um, the panels simply sit on top of floating system uh, where panels can be removed in future if you do need to add a new HVAC unit or, or make some adjustment to the roof layout. Um, the inverters, this uh, will convert our DC power, the direct current power on the roof to alternating current or AC power to directly feed the building, meaning that when the new middle school is, is up and running and using power, um, that power will come first from the solar panels. The excess generation during peak generation periods will actually power the neighborhood. I know it's in a residential neighborhood there. So a bunch of the neighboring homes will be receiving power from the array, which you as the school district would be selling to Eversource um, and getting revenue from. And then when the power from the panels is not sufficient to meet the demand, um, you'll simply continue to draw grid power as you would otherwise do. Um, I can talk a bit more about the technology if you'd like. Um, but we're seeing continued advances. Probably the most important for you all is, is the financials. Um, and let me just pause for a moment on why this is coming before you tonight. Um, we were asked uh, actually about a year ago to do the initial design as, as the plans were coming together for the new middle school, um, knowing that there is a step down schedule for the tax credit, the investment tax credit that is something the district itself can't monetize because it is provided through the tax code only. So um, any tax exempt municipality or nonprofit is not able to directly access these tax incentives. But the way in which we financed all of the previous city and school district projects, as well as about 150 other projects for municipalities and nonprofits in New Hampshire is through this PPA or power purchase agreement. Um, and I think you're fairly familiar with this. I touched on it when I presented to the school board last year. Um, but in, in brief, we have local impact investors who share our mission and who have enough tax liability to be able to take those tax credits. They own and operate the system, uh, selling the power to the school district for a bit less than the current cost of grid power. So you have some savings from the day the system is turned on. Um, they own the system for at least five years. That's the required period according to the IRS. Um, so during that five year period, the city has no capital expenses, no maintenance responsibilities, but realizes modest savings each year by buying the solar power from their roof for less than they would buy grid power from Eversource. After five years, starting year six or any year thereafter, the city can buy out the array for a significant discount and the impact investor passes on most of those tax benefits that they've received um, through a discounted buyout at 60% of the initial build cost in year six and then less each year thereafter based on 
fair market value. Um, the reason again for the current timing, uh, although the school is, is certainly not yet uh, installed, um, is that the tax credit is currently at 26%. Starting on January 1st, it steps down to 22%, so an 18% reduction in the tax credit value. And then starting a year later in 2022, it goes all the way down to 10%. By moving forward now, if this committee is comfortable um, and signing the initial PPA contract, knowing that there may be some adjustments to the design as, as the actual architectural plans are finalized, but by moving to a contract now and by uh, allowing revision to purchase the panels, not all of the components, but the panels for the array, we are able to lock in under the IRS safe harbor provision, that current 26% tax credit. Again, that's how the investor realizes a portion of their return. And so the tax credit directly impacts what the PPA rate is. And I'll show you what that is um, on the next slide. So moving forward, if the committee is comfortable now would allow a lower PPA rate, greater savings for the school district by um, protecting or reserving the full tax credit before it steps down. And as long as we've made that procurement, we bought the panels for you, and are continuing to work with you. And as long as we complete the installation within the next two years, um, that tax credit will remain in full effect. Um, the, the numbers, and, and I also gave those for Penichuk. Um, so the initial build cost for this system comes to just about a million dollars. That's what the investor would finance. Um, no upfront cost to the school district. The PPA rate for both schools, and this is when the current tax credit is assumed, comes to 8.75 cents. Um, that's compared to over 10 cents as the current cost of grid electricity for supply and delivery from Eversource. Um, as with the current school projects, Fairgrounds and Dr. Crisp, those would rise, the PPA rate would rise by 2% a year, which tracks a little bit less than what the government projects for electricity inflation in New Hampshire out through 2040. Um, then if you chose to buy out in year six, that would be 60% of the initial build cost, um, $698,000. And um, if we carry that out over 25 years, which is the warranty period, and then 40 years, which is the minimum commercial lifespan of the array, and we do build into this analysis um, the assumption that you'll want to pay someone else to do operations and maintenance so the district isn't responsible for doing any preventive maintenance or repairs that are required. Um, this also assumes the reduction each year of about half a percent per year in the solar panel output in accordance with the panel warranty. It also assumes a full replacement of the, of the inverters midway through the system life. So when we build all these factors in, include that buyout cost, um, the savings for the new middle school project would come to just over a million dollars over that 25 year warranty period and about 2.7 million over the 40 year lifespan. Um, it's a little bit less than the Penichuk project because it's a little bit smaller than what we're proposing over at Penichuk. Um, and just to, to share these on, on the graph, um, your worst case scenario would be that light blue line, a term PPA where the district uh, chooses never to buy the array for the, for the middle school, just continues buying the power from the array. In that case, your savings are, are more modest on the order of half a million dollars over the, those 25 years, um, a, bit, a bit less over 25, a bit more over 40 years. Um, the, the better scenario, if you can build into the, the capital budget plan or uh, plan to, to bond it with other projects six years or eight years or 12 years from now is that early buyout. Um, as we show here in the orange line, bought out in year six, um, you would then see um, between year six and year 12 and a half, um, you'd recoup that investment and then the savings would increase substantially thereafter. Um, and then likewise, the levelized cost when we compare kind of your status quo scenario, the utility costs over on the right, little more than 10 cents today. If we take the government's projection of electricity inflation for New Hampshire, about 17 cents over the 40 year lifespan of the array. Um, if you can go with the solar and the early buyout, that would be 4.6 cents over the life of the system. Um, or if the, that worst case scenario, if you don't buy it out at any point in the 25 year term, about eight cents. Um, so those are the highlights. Um, I did throw in Penichuk here, um, similar, but just a little bit higher. I think that gives the overview. Um, and again, since this content is, I, th I think, fairly familiar, um, I, I should probably leave it at that, but I'm happy to take any questions that you have. So just a few questions. Um, you're looking for the joint special to take a vote this evening. 
um, to approve the solar panels on the two schools. Um, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, I know where you're going, Sean. <laughs> Sean, good. No, I, I just um, no. What we're looking for this committee is to approve the solar panels on the new middle school. Uh, there's a parallel effort, and all well, everybody in the board of ed here is going to see the same presentation next Monday night. Uh, we went to finance and operations this past week, and they approved it. Uh, to go to the board of ed, full board of ed. So um, we're just looking for the new middle school tonight. Yeah, I was getting to that. We, I was going to just say that the Penetuck school has to be approved by the school board, not not us. The new middle school is different. Other question is, is that if the city decides to buy the panels downstream, it'll be through the board of aldermen a bonding issue, not out of the school budget, because I know there was some fear on other schools about that. Uh, so uh, the other question, I just quick question. So we're only talking tonight about the new middle, the new middle school. Um, when you buy the panels, do they have to be used for that particular school? Uh, thanks, Alderman Dowd. When this, if the school district um, with the city determines to buy the system out, it is entirely yours to do with um, however you please. During the PPA term, um, the expectation is that they will continue to generate as designed on that system. Um, it has never happened in our 150 projects, but theoretically, if a given facility was actually closed down, the panels in that case, if the PPA was continuing, would be relocated to another school. But if you own them, by all means, you could move them if you chose. It's just a risk question that I wanted to ask. So I, I guess I have no problem. We've done it on several buildings already. Uh, it's been before the Board of Aldermen, it's been before the Board of Education, everybody here is totally familiar with it. So um, I would entertain a motion to approve moving forward with solar panels for the new middle school as presented by Mr. Dan Weeks of Revision Energy. Do I have a so motion? Moved. So moved. Okay. Heather, Heather you won the bat, the toss up on hands right now. Any questions? Alderman Lou. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to be certain I understood this. This is a new, um, this is an addition to the cost of the school. No. No. There's no cost to the city. Um, say it again. There's no cost to the city. We're just allowing them to put the solar panels on the roof. It's like all the other projects. The installation and maintenance costs are absorbed by Revision Energy, not, not the city. Okay, thank you. And Alderman Klee. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Dowd. Um, I guess my question is, when we were given the, the three scenarios of never buying it out, um, buying it right at the beginning or buying it after the six years, the, the latter two, I really didn't see too much of, a, of a, um, a, an overall cost savings difference. Um, can that be explained a little bit more? I, when, when I saw the chart of the the, the orange line, the blue line, and 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 so on, um, yeah, Dan, is that possible? Thank you so much, uh, Alderman Clee, and, and also my state representative here in Ward Three. Um, so we do not, we it's not quite an apples to apples in the sense that a perch the purchase scenario is a cash purchase assumption where there's no financing cost built in um, when and it's maybe one time out of 10, a city or school district will choose to buy it outright. Almost all of the time, they prefer the, the PPA to avoid any upfront cost um, and give them the flexibility so that if they're not in a good position in six years, they can wait till year nine or 13 or, um, or, or not at any point. Um, if we were to build in um, a bond rate, then you would see a, a greater spread between the two. Um, but you're right that it's not a huge difference um, and that is because there are some costs, our investors are quite magnanimous. They make a lot less than market returns, but they do require a certain rate of return, low single digits um, in order to justify the investment and, and, and the management of it. So when you factor in, essentially we have a finance cost of sorts built into the PPA rate. We haven't built that into the direct purchase rate, um, which would spread those lines out a bit further. So thank you. 
I think we get to we get to five years to look and see how all these systems are working on Lake Street on on um, where's the other one the other school um, you know see how they're working and the city would make a financial determination as to whether it made sense to buy them it'll be strictly an economic type of decision and we don't have to worry about it for five years and possibly we don't have to expend any money at all it just stays on the roof and we get the power advantage as, as was explained. So any other questions for revision I, energy? I, I just have a quick follow up, quick. Um, sure. The reason, thank you, um, Alderman Doug. The reason I brought that up was because um, I wanted the viewing audience that were looking at it to see that there really was probably a difference between those two. I didn't want the question of why don't we just buy it out, right? And, and, and gain on it. Um, I, I had a feeling that there was a bigger, a bigger difference um, in that. And I'm all for the PPA. So um, thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one, would the clerk please call the roll? Okay. On the motion, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Linda Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Alderwoman Wilshire? You're on mute. Come back to her. Okay. Um, Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. <laughs> uh, motion carries 10 to 0. All right. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Dan. Thank you very much. We're very nice honored to, to work again. with you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Next item of business is the new middle access route road. I am going to share my screen as soon as I get this presentation up. Uh, If I don't go full screen, IT will jump on me. Come on. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. All right. So um, everyone's aware that uh, we've been in trying to acquire the land for the access road to the new middle school. So we have reached an agreement with the owners of 36 Buck Meadow Road and have a seller's signed purchase and sale agreement. And I'll explain the next steps in the process. Um, we have to complete a legislative process on our side and before the mayor will si can sign it and we schedule a closing. So this has been a long process. We had planned and looked at the different avenues of access off of Buck Meadow Road. Uh, we, for many reasons, we decided on, on the lot that we ended up purchasing. Or, or purchasing. We've been negotiating over several months and uh, we're in the process of, of, of doing the acquisition. And then uh, at some point, uh, probably in the spring, you know, we start building the road. So I think everybody knows where the lot is, but um, this, is, this is the lot we're buying, it's 36, Buck Meadow Road. Our land is, if you can see my cursor, the school lot is here. And if I go to the next slide, this is a conceptual road design. It'll go up. And uh, before anybody asks a question, I can't talk about this piece yet. We're still in, in the acquisition process. So that will remain uh, on the table for now, but uh, we hope to have that very soon. And then this is, is the way the road will run. And in a minute, when I talk about the northern piece, we're talking about basically this up here. And when I talk about the southern piece, we're talking about this down here. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to be as much land as being shown because we have to run utilities and sidewalk and utility access and a number of other, and a, 
drainage swale and a number of other things. So what I'm looking for tonight is approval from the Joint Special Building Committee tonight to move forward with the legislation to the Board of Aldermen. It's slated to be on the agenda. It's on the agenda for next Tuesday night for the Board of Aldermen. It will then be referred uh, to the Infrastructure Committee and the Planning Board. The plan it'll be on the agenda for the Planning Board on the 5th of November. We hope to have a recur another infrastructure meeting right after that Planning Board. Uh, and then it will go back for its second reading at the Board of Aldermen, hopefully no later than November 10th. And when approved by the full Board of Aldermen, uh, it will be the purchase and sale will be signed by the mayor. Uh, I will need a motion to allow me to go forward with an acquisition at the end of the presentation. I have a motion I'll be looking for. So just to go through the purchase and sale real quick to answer any questions. We've been in negotiations with the owners for many months now, and to some extent it was slowed down by COVID-19, as you can well imagine. Uh, one of the owners, two of the owners live uh, in Nashua, one adjacent to the property, and the other owner lives out in Arizona. But some negotiation, uh, the negotiations were conducted by attorney Bolton and the seller's attorneys uh, back and forth, and we reached agreement with the things I'm gonna outline. Uh, the agreement that we've reached can't be changed or we'll have to start the process all over again. There are specific things that the sellers wanted uh, and uh, helped us reach a very reasonable price. I believe we have reached an excellent agreement and we're moving on to the new middle school. I'm going to highlight the key points and I provided each of you with a copy of the purchase and sale. The rest of the Board of Aldermen will be getting it in their package with the legislation. And what the agreement says is uh, the closing will be in a date agreed to by both parties. The sellers are very anxious to sell the property. There, uh, there are no liens on the property, no pending litigation, no known hazardous material on the property. Uh, this, we have done a full uh, evaluation of the property uh, um, and uh, have had surveyors and, and uh, other other tests of the land and everything else on, on it. There are three parts as ex explained in the uh, purchase and sale, the roadway itself, that includes all easements and uh, uh, all the utilities and everything else that we will need. Uh, there's a portion north of the roadway and a portion south of the roadway. When the road is completed and we don't require anything with any of the land north of the road, this includes any sidewalks, utility easements and, and all that, uh, we are going to uh, transfer that, pro that small piece of property on the north of the road back to the, to the sellers and they are going to cha we'll change the lot line and then they will be responsible for, for anything on that property north of the road. We don't need it. We don't need to take care of it. And uh, so we have no, no issue with giving it back to them, that small piece. The, the city will convey a single uh, point curb cut that we will determine where it is so that they can access their property off of the, uh, the access road. The land south of the road, when we're completed with the road, we have agreed with the sellers uh, because one of them, I said, lives right next door to that property, that the city decides to sell the property within the first two, 20 years, they will get first right of refusal to buy it. And we also agreed not to permit any construction or development during that same 20 year period. Uh, and finally, um, in agreement with the sellers, you know, we've agreed to name the road Dan Antonio Drive after the seller's father. Um, the city, the property will remain the city property, not school property, and the road will be a city street and maintained by the city. Uh, the school will only be responsible for what's on the school property. And the agreed upon price with all the contingencies I just mentioned is $370,000 and we, uh, that is no issue with the money that we set aside originally to uh, buy this property. So the motion I will need when I get out of this slide presentation is uh, I'd like to have a motion to accept and agree to the purchase and sale agreement as presented this evening. 
and authorize the chairman to bring the purchase of sale forward to the board of aldermen and the mayor for the final agreement and signature by the mayor. As part of the agreement, the city will create an easement on the new school property for a potential future tie-in by the sellers to their property of utilities at their expense. So there would be no um, cost to the city. Okay, let me, uh, how do I get out of this? Oh, stop sharing, there we go. And I'm back to the group. Uh, I think what we do is we get a motion first and then we'll have questions. Would anybody want to make the motion that I outlined in my last slide, second to last, sli or last slide? I'll make it. Okay, that so, Mr. Greeno? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Greeno has made the motion uh, as, as outlined in my presentation. Are there any questions? I also have a question. Certainly. Um, do, you, do you know what the width of the road is going to be? Um, and the right, actually, the width of the right away of the road or the road road profile. No, you know, we didn't want to pay for the final design of the road. Um, I mean, generally, we know what it is. We've been working with the Department of Public Works. It'll be a city road, so Harriman will be working in conjunction with them to design and build the road. But we didn't want to spend any money in that regard until we own the land. Okay, so so the the design of the road hasn't really been done in, um, it's but it's going to be a city road, so it might have. It, yeah, it will meet all city street requirements. Okay, including drainage. Okay. And lighting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, this this is Raymond. Uh. So, Mr. Groening, papers just. You're breaking up a little. Oh, sorry. I said also lighting and socks. I'd like to make sure we have a safe route to school. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and that'll all be, all be taken care of. We're, uh, we we want to have the lights on the access road be similar to the lights we're going to use on the school property. But uh, we need to talk to the uh, DPW um, if it's less expensive to tie into the agreement the city has on street lights. We may go down that road, but it will be well lit. Yes, for a number of reasons. Any other questions? So the motion before us uh, is to allow me to take it forth under the terms of the motion that Mr. Garino made to the full board of aldermen. Would you call the roll, please? Okay, on the motion, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Linda Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries 10 to zero. Mr. Dubois, did you have something? Point of order. Was there a second to that motion? You don't need a second. Okay, thank you. <laughs> different, different roles, different committees. <laughs> we, we function under the Board of Alderman rules. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's good. Now, uh, the next is the Penichuk intersection, and uh, to some degree, I'll let Jamie do some of the talking, but at the planning board meeting, uh, basically the planning board, uh, for anybody that hadn't seen it, uh, was fine with the on-site part of the school stuff. They had a couple, couple minor questions I had. Their concern was that they all definitely wanted a traffic light at the uh, intersection of the school and Manchester Street but they had no recommendation from the Department of Public Works. The city engineer, the new city engineer, Dan Hudson, wasn't there. Um, we have since on Wednesday had a meeting with the Department of Public Works and Vaness, and we'll explain Vaness in a minute. Um, and uh, we have come to agreements and uh, we will be moving forward to the planning board 
with the recommendations for a traffic lighted intersection because it is the most dangerous school intersection in the city of Nashville. Um, Jamie, do you want to add something? Sure. Um, yeah. So the the um, the design has 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 uh, for right from the get go, I think, was looking at putting in a traffic light. Um, when we went into that planning board meeting, we hadn't uh, fully engaged the traffic engineer. Now, there was a traffic study done, um, but there wasn't a full engagement of a traffic engineer. Um, to to fulfill the warrants required at, to to allow that traffic light to be uh, imposed. So they have we, we we all have collectively we we as in Alderman Dowd and and, and uh, Mr. Smith and and Harvey met with them um, past, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, them being Vanessa Associates to review um, what warrants would be needed to fulfill those that traffic signal uh, request and. Things are looking good, so we're we plan to go on November fifth um, with Vanessa Associates to talk to the planning board when those those questions come up again about the the warrants that are required. So we can later in the agenda we had the Vanessa contract. Uh, Vanessa is a, a traffic traffic engineering expertise. They are going to work with Harriman to design the intersection and do all the engineering sign offs that are required for anything you do with a city with that kind of a city street and traffic light and stuff. And uh, everybody got a copy of the Vanessa uh, proposal and contract that has been reviewed in detail by city corporation council. The suggestions he had were all incorporated into the contract. I also had it reviewed by city of Nashville risk and they had a few comments and those have all been incorporated into the contract. So as far as City Hall is concerned, that contract is good to go. Um, Sean, did you wanna talk any more about the contract? They will be working for the city, by the way, but reporting with Harriman. Yeah, so hopefully everybody got the most recent uh, version, sent the, the latest out this afternoon after uh, risks comments were included primarily dealing with insurance requirements. So the contract uh, is uh, for proposed offsite improvements, uh, design and contract oversight for Vanessa Associates Incorporated. Total amount is $88,750. And we probably need a motion to that effect. So we will need, it, this is not an increased cost of the contract. We've always had money in the contract, in the, uh, our bond to handle this intersection, including the actual building of it. Uh, and uh, so this is not an increased cost of the project, but we have to we have to approve it because it's a separate subcontract. Alderman Clean. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Smith, did you say it was 88,000? Yes, um, there was an earlier one that was sent out at the beginning of the week. It was uh, somewhat less, but after meeting with them, we had to expand the scope. So the new number is 88,750. Uh, okay. I, I thought the one that um, Alderman Dowd had sent out um, said 82,000. I, I probably opened the wrong one then. Well, we asked them after the meeting with the, the Nest met with us with the city engineer and direct the photo and their traffic engineer. And we structured a uh, sort of a phase contract so that, you know, the first phase of the contract will be putting some things together to go before the planning board and telling them that, you know, they're baptizing the intersection and they'll design it. And, and then uh, the, the second part of the contract will be to do the actual design. We don't need them doing the design, you know, tomorrow because it's not going to be built till spring. So they've got a okay. little time, but we do need to have enough information from Vanessa to go to the planning board to answer the questions and make sure that they all feel comfortable that there will be a traffic light there. And by the way, at the planning board, the neighbors, especially the one that lives right across the street, spoke in favor of it and said that they can't cross that street because it's worth your life. And Alderman Clee can tell you she's now tried directing traffic there a couple of times. That's like being in the Indy 500 trying to wave people into the pit. It, um, it, it truly is taking your life in your hands yeah. and, and having having our children and knowing that we're going to have more there um, right. and knowing that parents will still park on the opposite side of the school for their kids to cross the street to get into the cars. 
we need something there. Um, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Any uh, questions or other questions? All right, the motion is to authorize the approval of a contract to Vanessa Associates in the amount of $88,750. I made the motion. So any discussion, further discussion? Or, no, actually, who made that motion? I guess I, guess I did. did. All right, so <laughs> would the clerk please call a roll? Okay, on the motion, um, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Oh, gee. Yes. Ms. Yes. Brown? Ms. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda, Sean. Yeah, so in, in your package was a, a proposal um, from Allied uh, Universal who provides our security systems to the schools. And we're looking to replace the uh, exterior cameras at Fairgrounds Middle School. The existing cameras were installed about eight years ago. they have reached the end of their uh, service life, and a lot has changed in camera technology in intervening time. Um, so the, 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 the range and, and the angles that they cover allow us to reduce from eight cameras down to seven. Um, the new cameras will have uh, infrared technology. Um, if you're familiar at all with uh, pictures and whatnot, it's all about the pixels. Uh, the old cameras, uh, 1.3 megapixels. The new ones are five to eight. So that's a good size increase. Um, what the IR technology allows us to do is see uh, more detail at nighttime or low light or no, no, or low, no light in some cases. Um, and it is in my mind is a very good investment for this committee to, to do that. The proposal was the amount of $17,766.57. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve that? So move. <laughs> I got three at once. All right, Mrs. Raymond. Uh, okay, the motion is to authorize the purchase of uh, additional outside cameras or new outside cameras for the Fairgrounds Middle School. Uh, what was the amount? Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand seven hundred sixty-six dollars and fifty-seven cents. I will note, in addition, that it's a. Uh, expense that we did include in our original budget projections for safety and projection systems. Yeah, and and when you're talking about the investment that we have in that school building, uh, this is a pretty good investment. Uh, and any, you know, any, a lot of times in some of the older schools, the cameras can't catch anything and the police can't use the data. This would be different. Any questions, concerns? The clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Okay, now these fantastic contractors would like to get paid. <laughs> so we have the progress payments, uh, Mr. Smith. Yeah, so I'll, I'll read out the, the invoices. Uh, these are listed on your agenda on the uh, second page. Um, so for Harriman, we have invoices for Fairgrounds Middle School, Penichuk, and the new middle school, totaling uh, 249000 $312.20. For Harvey Construction, we have invoices for their work at Fairgrounds and Penichuk. Uh, two separate invoices totaling $1,202,897.57. For RPF Environmental, uh, those are the, the people that are uh, monitoring the 
removal of hazardous materials from the school, the invoice for Fairgrounds Middle School in the amount of $23,728.75. Uh, Turner Group had provided an invoice uh, for, um, it says a uh, new middle school there on the, your agenda it should be Fairgrounds Middle School. Um, no, I, I take that back. That is correct. <laughs> they, they are looking at the, they're, so they're the commissioning agent for us and they're looking at the design and they provided an uh, invoice of 2,200. Uh, William Scotsman uh, invoices uh, for the two portable classrooms at Fairgrounds Middle School totaling $72,352.98. And finally, there is an addition to this list, which hopefully received this week, uh, Page Street Rentals uh, for the uh, ground storage units so we're using at Fairgrounds Middle School for $190. And you total all that up, it comes to uh, $1,550,681.90. Okay, you've heard uh, Mr. Smith, would somebody like a motion to approve the invoices and payment? Alderman Wilshire? I will move uh, to pay the invoices um, given to us by um, Sean Smith. For Harriman, Harvey, RPF, Turner Group, William Scotsman, and Page Street. Okay, any questions on the invoices? And everybody was able to use the link to get to them. We, we, we didn't want people to have to start printing out 800 pages for every meeting. So it's much easier to go to look online. All right, no questions. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Thank you. So, Sean, you want me to come down tomorrow and sign those or? Um, sure. Okay. All right. The, you get something for meeting dates for 2021? I don't have it with me. And I didn't see uh, it on the agenda, other than other than listed. <laughs> so uh, we, we can address that next month. Yeah, let's defer that the next month. And uh, okay, so um, comments by committee members. Non-public, we don't need. Um, by the way, behind the scenes, there are a lot of meetings that are going on all week long, all day long. Uh, on, on the middle school project. Um, either Sean or I, or in most cases, both of us are on those meetings. And we we have a meeting on site on each of the, uh, right on the schools, uh, at least every other week. Uh, so uh, getting a lot of oversight. But like I said before, if anybody wants to take a tour of fairgrounds, uh, there's not much to see at Conachuk at the moment. Most of that's outside. Um, you know, let me know. And, and I think if it's okay with Harvey, uh, if we had one or two people at a time with hard hats and masks, Carl. Yeah. All, I, all I'd ask is that you check in at the trailer with our superintendent, Mike Halliday. That's all. So you I, know, I, would not go past, I would have, I would not do that without talking with Mike. Right. <laughs> well, then that, we're fine. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I forget who made that Alderman Lou? Yes. Alderman Lou, a motion to adjourn. Will the clerk please call the roll? Okay, on the motion to adjourn, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries 10 to 0. Okay, we're adjourned at 9.04 p.m. Thank you, everyone. The next meeting is November 19th.